Now that you know how to use filters to search, edit, format, and sort data, you can begin creating applications by combining them together using pipelines. Recall that a pipeline allows you to connect commands together by sending the output from one filter to the input of another. For example, I showed you an application earlier that involved me keeping the expense report on the computer. I might want to sort those by date and then total them by month. This could be done with a pipeline. I'll leave it up to you to figure it out, however. The pipeline example I'm going to use involves the phone list. Let's suppose that your company's gotten large enough where certain phone numbers have to be moved to another building. Let's say that those phone numbers that begin with a four or a five are moved to another building and will have to have a different prefix on the phone number. You've been asked to print out only those numbers that are going to change. This is a two-step process. First, you need to find those phone numbers that are going to change, and then you have to make the change in the phone number. This pipeline does that. The grep command will find those phone numbers that begin with a four or a five. And this said command will put a seven two in front of those numbers, which is the prefix that you need to add. Once you've created a pipeline, you can extend it quite easily. Let's suppose you want to sort those people whose phone numbers are going to change by last name. In this case, you take the grep command, pipe it to the said command to add the prefix on the phone number, and pipe that to the sort command with the dash F option so you can now sort the list by last name. Suppose you want to put the first name in front of the last name, so you want to format the output of the sort command. That's simple. Just tack an aw command on the end of the line. I have to confess something. The phone list contains hand-selected names that don't get in the way when I work my examples. Because in reality, the phone list is poorly designed. The problem is that names have commas and spaces embedded in them. I've chosen to use that as the delimiter between the last name and the first name. You should never choose a field delimiter that might appear in the data. This is discussed in detail in the textbook. To create a real life example, let's return to some code I talked about earlier in this class. I mentioned that if you had a file of names, you could print them on a printer, if you knew how to use the filters. Well, you now know how to use those filters, so let's create that application. The first step is designing the data file. The data file I'm suggesting will include somebody's first and last name, their street address, their city, their state, and their zip code. Because I want each of these to be separate fields, I have to pick a unique field delimiter to separate the fields. Because I don't know what characters might be in somebody's name or a street address, and it's best to choose a unique character to be a delimiter. Because people's names never contain tabs, I'm going to use a tab character to separate fields in this file. I've entered some sample names on the computer. And let's take a look at that file. The name of this file is name.list. And as you see, it contains five names and addresses from various places in the US. Each field is separated by a tab, as you can see. Now, I can identify where each field is as long as the delimiter I use is a tab and not just a space or a tab. The problem is that awk and sort use spaces and tabs as their delimiters. 
However, both of those commands offer an option which allows me to select the delimiter. In the awk command, you use a dash capital F followed by the character you want to separate the fields on. In this example, I want to separate the fields on a tab. So I've listed a tab inside single quotes after the capital F. In sort, you use dash lowercase t to identify the field separation character. The dash t is followed by the character you want to use. Again, a tab is listed here inside the single quotes. Remember, I want to find those in California, sort them by zip code, format them into one-up labels, and then print them at the printer. Although in my case, I'm simply going to put them to the screen because I don't have the printer access set up here. To find those in California, I can use this grep command. I simply search for a field, ignoring case, that contains a C and an A and is surrounded by two tabs. Next, I pipe that to the sort command, using the tab as the delimiter, which the dash T single quote tab single quote allows me to do. I want to sort on the fifth field. And that's what the plus four in this command line says to do. Once I've selected those in California and sorted them by zip code, I need to format them into one-up labels. The first thing I have to do is to tell awk to select fields based on tab characters only. This command line shows the dash capital F followed by single quote tab single quote. This tells awk to separate fields on tabs only. I want to print labels in this format. I want to put the name on the first line, the street address on the second line, the city, a comma, the state, and then the zip code. In aux terminology, I want to print dollar one, dollar two, dollar three, a comma, dollar four, and then dollar five. This is what the awk command looks like. Note the print command with the backslash ends in it. A one-up mailing label has six lines on the label and one line between each of the labels. In order to keep the labels in the appropriate area, I have to skip four blank lines after the three address lines. I do this by telling print to print three new lines and then to add one of its own. Backslash n is a code to tell print to print a new line. To print two blank lines, use a backslash n inside double quotes. The backslash n tells awk to print a new line. The second new line comes from the print command itself, which always adds a new line to the end of whatever it prints. I've entered this command off camera to save you the time of watching me type it. When I run the command, as you can see, it prints out the names of the people in California in the appropriate format. This is just one of many pipelines I could demonstrate at this point. However, to save time on the tape, I've chosen to include those examples in the course notes. What's more, there are also additional examples in the course textbook. You've now seen four Unix filters demonstrated. While I think they're the most important filters, there are additional ones you should be aware of. In the textbook, there's a chapter that covers eight different Unix filters. And I urge you to read that chapter. 
it takes a while to learn how to do pipelines properly. I recommend you use this two-step strategy. First, break your problem down into the component features required to create that application. Just like we did with the label printing pipeline example early on in the tape. We weren't concerned with which filters would do each part of the pipeline. Instead, we were concerned with searching, sorting, and formatting. That is, breaking the application down into the individual steps that were required to perform the application. Once you know the steps required to perform the application, you can find a filter to do that step in the pipeline. This marks the end of this video course. Creating applications using pipelines is an important part of using the Unix system effectively. As a result, I suggest that you review the material we've covered in this course and work the exercises at the end of this section. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video course and found it worth your time. However, whatever your experience, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I'd like to know about it. Please use the evaluation form at the end of the manual to tell us what you thought about it and how we might improve it. Send it along to this address. Also, if you have any questions or would like to request more information on our services, send those along as well. There's an additional video course that covers shell programming that is a natural follow-on to this one. We've included information on this video course in the manual as well. Thank you.